ripping your jersey, just what are the emotions after a game like this that ends the way it does, but also goes through all the overtimes, all of the incredible shot making? Our whole season, we've had you know some tough breaks and self-inflicted wounds. Some games that you know obviously you should should have won, and there's disappointment walking over for it. And like tonight is a night where you felt like you played well enough to win, almost like the sack game, and uh, we can't have nothing to show for it. We fought our you know, the whole way, um, stayed in it, even when things weren't going our way. Gave ourselves an opportunity. <clears throat> it was on the last possession three or four times, regu regulation, both overtimes. And, you know, it just shows that we, we, we really want it. We're playing with a little bit of desperation, trying to you know, change the tide of our season. And we just don't have nothing to show for right now. Steph, you said the other night after the loss um, that you viewed that loss differently in terms of closing than some of your prior losses. How did you look at tonight with the two overtimes, but the inability to still close it out? It's the same vibe. It doesn't make it any better. It actually makes it worse. Um, like I said, I played well enough. Had a you know a tough stretch in the middle of the fourth quarter, but. You can see we were flying around, you know, playing aggressive. Understanding every possession was important. And, you know, it makes or misses or whatever, like there's just an energy about what we were trying to do. So the good news is if we can keep doing that, you know, we would like to think that we can build momentum and that's, that's what our hope is, but it's just a tough way to, you know, back to back games at home that you, you play well enough to win and just don't get it done. Through your scope, do you feel like you, you might have found something with Draymond primarily at the five and then that new starting and closing lineup together? Uh, he's had plenty of experience there. Um, and he provides such a big presence. That lineup, you know, we got some speed, we have some athleticism, we have Draymond's brain and mind, and just the way that he sees the floor defensively. Uh, we had a pretty good start to the game tonight, so it's one of those situations where, you know, you have a lot of confidence with that group, but it is a different lineup, again, that we're trying to, you know, build an identity around. Uh, and there was a lot of good to, you know, to see out there with that group, so I'm sure we're probably gonna roll with that. Steph, uh, just curious, bigger question about the league. Uh, had a lot of 70 point games lately. Uh, used to be something very few and far between. We saw a lot of great offensive skill in this game. Uh, why? What? What? What is your opinion on that? Why do you think we're getting more of these games than ever? Is it? the offensive skill of the league being higher than ever or, uh, you know, other things? How do you see it? It's probably a combination of a lot. There's guys that know how to put the ball in the basket. <clears throat> you know, with Luca, Joel, uh, Cat, Book, they're perennial scorers. They're, they, that's what they do. And the level of it and how, you know, in a short time span, you know, I mean, games like we've had like that, I think, you know, guys get high build confidence, floodgates open, and, you know, that's when the momentum kind of, like, they're, they're obviously capable of doing that. It's interesting, though, like, how the game is refereed and things like that. You've see, seen it a little bit tonight. Um, you know, it's, it's hard to be as physical as you want with some of the patterns of how things are called. And uh, guys are taking advantage of it. <clears throat> it and, you know, if you can obviously score all three levels and get to the foul line, you're gonna have a you're gonna have a night. So I think it's great for the league in the sense of showcasing skills sets and you know the variety of how guys score. 
but there's some stuff to correct as well. Steve made sure to point out the free throw discrepancy, 243 to 16, and also that you only got three free throws in uh, 43 minutes. How much do you feel like that tilted the game and, and what played in all that? I mean, we've had this conversation, especially playing against them. They draw a lot of fouls. The last year, they had some crazy, you know, free throw disparity um, and advantage. <clears throat> Tonight is just one of those where this is not consistent, and that's the most frustrating part. Um, because you want to be in a, in a place where the players decide the game, and. It's either the players inside the game or it's consistent on both ends of what you're calling. And so, like, um, not to say, obviously, we shoot a lot of threes. I know that there's a different style, but there's probably, like, three plays I was involved in where it's just a clear uh, bad call in the, in the sense of giving, you know, guys unnecessary free throw and attempts. And then on the other end, uh, contact or you know plays that just they look the other way for whatever reason so like in, in, a, in a in a single game when you have inconsistency on both sides that's the most frustrating thing of all it doesn't mean that we're going to go to the line 58 times it just means that there's a tone of the game and there's a flow that we can you know adapt to and adjust to um, and it wasn't like that tonight so it's, it's tough Steph, um, LeBron said he he hopes he'll be cool with his grandkids someday. The fact that he got to battle with you in so many games over the years. I mean, do you do you, uh, he he talks he, he plans to talk to his grandkids about all these these thrilling games with you and hopes it make makes him cool. Um, do, do you do you sense that that these games will will be something that you guys look back on years from now? Absolutely. Um, <clears throat> every year that we get to do this and, you know, the back and forth, the battles from all the finals runs to the playoffs last year, after the horn sounded tonight, like there was a little laugh of, you know, who would, you can't like imagine a scenario where a game like tonight happens. His year, what, 21? Uh, you're 15. Uh, all the other guys in the league that have been doing it for 15 plus years, KD, you know, CP, like it's it's insane. So uh, just uh, you look forward to the battles, but you also appreciate you know the mutual like respect of what it takes to keep doing what you're doing at this level because only a few people know how hard it is uh, you know, having to be in that group. What have you seen from Wiggins over these last few games, and how much of a difference has it made? We just love aggressive Wiggs. That's you know obviously making his presence felt on the defensive end, and taking what you know is there on the offensive end. I think it's probably a little bit more opportunity to feature feature him on offense, especially with some mismatches and stuff. And um, especially when he has that aggressive nature to you know his game, it only helps us even more. So. He's been through obviously a lot this year. Understanding, you know, when he plays well, we're a much better team, and we, we obviously need that when he's out there. Uh, you guys have mentioned how many heartbreakers you lost this year, but Steve came and said how optimistic he was after this one. Do you feel more positive threads to pull after something like this, to, despite how heartbreaking it was? I think it just you just stay in the moment, like you feel the the pain of it, um, and embrace it. But you need to find something again. It's all like winning is contagious, and you know these last two games, if they go the other way, like it's just a different vibe in our locker room. Even if it's a one point win, and you're still like, oh, we can play better, we can do this, this, and that. So. The challenge is to not let uh, the pain of it last until, like, when we come back to practice, you know, get ready for Tuesday. We have to come with, you know, the same desperation and energy and competitiveness. Um, try to have a short memory, but you know, losing sucks. It's 
worst feeling in the world. Um, and until you get over the hump, you kind of have to just sit in it. That's where we're at. Steph, you seem to have a good uh, success taking Davis off the dribble. I was curious if you were determined to take a three in the second overtime. Was that was that going to be Which a, the three pointer you made? Was were you going to take that regardless to, to end it or not? Or was Jack in the second overtime? Yeah. No, that was a read just because it was a catch and shoot. Draymond set a good screen, a turn around, and so uh, Vanderbilt's on the ground. That's a shot I got to take. It wasn't one where you're dribbling around, you know, a little bit of chaos and trying to force one up. So, um, honestly, whether it's tied up, down one, up one, or tied down one, down two, didn't matter. Um, that was a shot I was going to take based on the way the play unfolded. Cool. Thank you. Appreciate that.